the Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk in, mall, super no. Anything less is unacceptable. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk in, mall, super no. Anything less is unacceptable. Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Ball talk, fashion walk in, ball super no. Anything less is unacceptable. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk in, mall super no. Anything less is unacceptable.
Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining the Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and this is my co-host, Ella Vistella. Hey, Ella. Hey, my na new name is now Humpty Dumpty, okay? <laughs> As of the last four minutes, my new name is Humpty Dumpty, but yes, Everything is lovely. How are you, my girl? I am doing great. I'm so glad all of you could make it to the premiere. I'm super excited. Absolutely. So am I. Super excited. So the purpose of the show, I wanted to provide a platform where we inspire, uplift, and motivate entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs as well. That's the purpose of the show. We want to be able to help aspiring entrepreneurs win because that's what we're about we're mm -hmm. about winning right mm -hmm. absolutely so i'm just super excited as am i and um i would just like to say um as shelly said we are passionate about helping people you know for those of you who have any kind of idea to start a business maybe you've had a dream and you want to start a business maybe you started something and you failed look just try again you know it's not too late no matter no matter whether you're 25 or 55 it's never too late so we hope that tonight you'll be inspired Definitely. You'll be encouraged and that you'll give us some positive feedback to help us to continue to bring the Shelly Roy show to you. Absolutely. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with me, as I stated before, Shelly Roy is a brand. I'm an author. I just recently published a book a couple months ago. Due to the untimely passing of my mom, that was my inspiration to write the book. The book is titled The Making of a Boss. It's available for purchase via Amazon, and it's also available for purchase via ShellyBossUp.com. Also, as a spinoff of the book, I just recently launched my Boss Apparel collection. That's B-O-S-S, -S, which means to me, built on survival skills, which I'm sure a lot of you all can relate to, but that's something that's near and dear to me. And then last but not least, The Shelly Roy Show. So that is a brand. So did you want to add anything else since Sounds you're an good, entrepreneur honey. as well, Ella? Well, for those of you who um, don't know me and for those of you who just met me, um, um, I was going to say something about the fall. I don't need to continue with that. I am Ella Vespella, the phenomenal storyteller. Some of you may wonder where that name came from. Um, my grandmother, at Christmas time when I was younger, she used to spill stuff and I remember her spelling go out to the car and get the C-A-N-D-Y and from that moment I learned the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and from that I was hooked on spelling and so my name is Ella Vespella, phenomenal storyteller. I believe in taking the art of rapid spelling and telling stories to infuse my audiences. Okay, so I am uh, an inspiring author. I have a comedy workbook that I just completed. Uh, it's going to be sent to edit. Uh, I'm also on a comedy writing team um, that's going to be producing a sitcom in 2021. Mm -hmm. And um, I've got some, some recent bookings coming up, and I'm really super excited about that. So if anyone wants to be a okay me please do so <laughs> tonight if you'd like to. Thank you so much. <laughs> Great. Okay, we're going to take a quick break before we bring up our guests. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk, and mall supernova. Anything less is unacceptable. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Ball talk, fashion walk, and multipreneur. Anything less is unacceptable.
Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk, in mall, super no. Anything less is unacceptable. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk, in mall, super no. Anything less is unacceptable. Super, super excited. We have some amazing guests lined up tonight. My first guest is doing major things in the community. She's being the change that she want to see in the community. Um, she's actually uh, running for advisory neighborhood commissioner for DC. So you guys help me welcome my first guest, Miss Elise Newhouse. Thank you. Thank you so much for the warm introduction. Absolutely. I'm so glad you could be here. Yes. Definitely. Thank so, you for having me. Absolutely. So there's so much that we want to know, especially mm -hmm. to you guys in the D.C. area. Um, tuning in, you definitely want to hear what this young woman has to say. So just for starting out, just give everybody an idea of where you're from and mm -hmm. where you grew up. Yeah, absolutely. So hi, everyone. My name is Elise Newhouse. Uh, I'm originally from Prince George's County, um, specifically the Largo Bowie area. I then moved to New Jersey and decided, you know, I wanted to come back to the Washington, D.C. area. So I went to Howard University, graduated Yay. in 2010. Go Bison! <laughs> um, and I was a political science major, a community development minor. So I've always been really passionate about helping people, about you know, understanding how we use policy to work for us, how we have very common sense um, solutions to, you know, problems within our community. Absolutely, awesome, mm -hmm. good stuff. 
good stuff for sure. So smart and pretty, okay. <laughs> so I'd like to ask, when did you realize you wanted to be in politics? Wow. So I, uh, that's a good question. You know, ever since I was younger, I was always that person that was, you know, always helping people. Um, I really enjoyed history, and I think history and um, how we're governed and, you know, understanding kind of the change in the community and just understanding from a historical perspective the problems that mm -hmm. um, plague our community always fascinated me. Mm -hmm. um, I originally thought I wanted to be an attorney, and I thought I wanted to go to law school. Um, and quickly realized, you know what, that might not be my ministry, but helping others is. And so, um, you know, I decided, you know, to major in political science. And, you know, I did not go to law school, but I always thought, you know, I always, you know, remained um, active in the community. So whether it was with um, the Northern Virginia Urban League, mm -hmm. um, tackling issues of, um, you know, um, housing or um, social justice, whether it was through the National Society of Black Engineers, um, looking to increase the number of um, African-American technical talent, um, or whether it's through the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, where we advocate awesome. on the issues of economic empowerment, education, and, um, um, and you know, just laws that affect us. Um, it's always been something that you know, I did on the side. And mm -hmm. I realized that, you know what, I think I want to you know, really step out on faith and do this thing, so. I am so proud mm -hmm. of you. Thank you. Sure. When I saw that you were running, I said, oh my God, she definitely has my support. You're definitely gonna be good at it because you're a real good people person. Thank you. And I know that firsthand as far as working in the community and mm -hmm. just giving your heart and willing to help people. So I'm, I'm super excited and I Thank know you. that you're going to serve the community well. Thank you. I sure. really appreciate that. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, so for the DC listeners and all of our other viewers, mm -hmm. give us an idea of what the role of an advisory neighborhood commissioner does and what that entails. Sure. So um, everybody has, you know, their local ANC. So your ANC, as uh, Shelly mentioned, is your advisory neighborhood commissioner. It's literally the lowest level or the closest level of government. And so um, the things that um, your ANC does really has an effect on your everyday life. So think about when you're driving down the road and there's potholes and you're like, oh, mm. my, my BMW just, you know, got messed up. And I wish somebody would, would fix these potholes. Or when you think about, you know, when you're maybe walking your dog or walking with your families and you see a whole bunch of trash in the community, you know, your ANC kind of holds the, the public work, DC Public Works accountable. Wow. Um, when, you know, there might be violence in your community or something that's happening that you don't like, you know, your ANC is really on the front lines talking to Washington MPD. Um, when you want to just um, create more of a sense of community, Absolutely. your ANC is there to kind of, you know, think through what those programs look like to bring that sense of community. And so um, that is really the role of the ANC. In addition, um, the ANC also weighs in on um, economic development in your area. Mm -hmm. And so um, when you think about getting permits for uh, various businesses to come in, you know, they can approve or dis you know, not approve, say, liquor licensing. So mm -hmm. if you are like, you know, we have enough liquor stores in our neighborhood and we don't need another one, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. you see that a liquor store pops up, well, you know, that is your ANC's responsibility to kind of approve or make sure that you have the right uh, community-centric development in your area. And so it's a very, very important role. They have a seat at the table with some of, you know, the, the beginnings of the decisions that kind of go to developers or that go um, to your, your councilmen. And so um, it's, it's such an important role and I just want to make sure that, you know, people know who their commissioner is. You can go mm -hmm. on a Greater Greater Washington uh, to look up your single member district if you don't know, but I definitely implore all of you uh, to do so. Oh, that's great. And congratulations, because I saw that you were, you're now backed by Greater Greater. So congratulations. Yes. And thank you so much for painting the picture for the audience and for those residents of DC and giving them a, a bigger picture of what the role of the ANC is. And, yes. and now for me, um, that makes sense because I really don't like driving into DC <laughs> because of that, because exactly. of the potholes, because of, 
you know, the streets, mm-hmm. you know, are not well kept. So that, that yes. was great insight. So yes. I appreciate you of sharing with us. And I, I know you're going to knock it out the park. So Thank you. Yeah, Thank you so much. Definitely. So I want to ask you, um, if you're uh, elected, how would you impact the community? Yes. So there's three main areas where I really want to impact the community. So education, Um, you know, the students in not only my single member district, 8D06, but in Ward 8, you know, we have different challenges, right? Um, 40% of uh, households east of the river, so Ward 7 and Ward 8, do not have access to internet, right? Mm -hmm. So they could be they don't have a computer in their home Mm -hmm. or they just don't have um, an internet subscription with like Verizon or Xfinity. And so when we talk about virtual learning, that poses problems, right? There's not equity in the classrooms. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one of the things that I think, you know, I could help with is one proposing legislation um, to kind of look at that from you know that ac- that access and affordability perspective, mm-hmm. but also to just get get my hands dirty, raise some money. Let's see if we can sponsor five or ten families for internet access for the year, so that you know the kids that are in those homes have access. Um, even providing you know collecting money and doing a. Um, raising money for laptops mm-hmm. so that kids are able to kind of get online. And so it's already difficult enough. You know, we didn't have to, you know, grow up and go to school online um, at such a young age. And so it's, you know, some of these kids are having so many difficulties with that. And so, like, let's help to make that easier for them, right? So that's education. Um, economic empowerment. Um, my single member district is along South Capitol. Mm-hmm. And so um, I want to ensure that we have community centric development. So I will look at you know, all those permits that are coming in. Um, I will make um, recommendations so that you know, we have good options when it comes to eating. Mm-hmm. Um, Ward 7 and 8 is known to be a food desert. And so, you know. Black folks love good food too. Yeah. Black folks love healthy food. And so, um, you know, that is something that I'm looking to make sure I have influence on. Um, specifically, bringing a, the Ward 8 farmers market to our area. It's right now, it's only on Alabama Avenue. So, if you That's ever, nice. you know, are on in that area, like on a Saturday, they are there, but bringing it um, within my single member district so that, you know, um, residents and families can have fresh food. Um, and then lastly, on um, public health and safety, just you know, making sure we have the basic things. So the community is changing. There's a lot of people with pets and animals, dog walking stations where mm-hmm. you know you can people don't have to like leave the crap like on the floor mm-hmm. or on the ground. Um, making sure our potholes are filled, making sure our roads are are clean. You know, if we need speed bumps, because there are streets where cars like to fly down. You know, putting that request in, and so those are very tangible and real solutions that I can encourage awesome. in my in my area. That is awesome. Isn't thank she you. sharp, guys? You are so sharp. Oh, thank for you. For sure. Um, and I know you touched a little bit about a little bit on the development side of it, but this is a somewhat of a loaded question. Mm-hmm. So um, what economical assistance and development would you suggest to the district and the federal government mm-hmm. concerning your community and those that have expressed some of the things that they would like to see mm-hmm. happen in their neighborhood? Yes. So um, Mayor Muriel Bowser has an initiative to add 36,000 more um, housing units in Washington, D.C. And so it is every ward's job to contribute to that in some way. Mm -hmm. Um, What I want to focus on is affordable affordable housing Mm -hmm. and making sure that, you know, in this change, everybody has been in D.C. for, you know, or a lot of you have been in D.C. for a long time. So you've seen the community change. You've seen or um, know people that have been displaced. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we were here. We need to be able to stay here. We need our families to be able to be here. And so having those affordable housing options is definitely something that I want to look at. And every, even our, the single member districts um, and the ANCs can contribute to that. So um, providing recommendations for where um, they can put those buildings, mm-hmm. not only so that um, there is kind of um, regular market uh, pricing for kind of those units, but also making sure that there's um, affordable dwelling units set aside for those buildings. And mm-hmm. so I think that's really important. Awesome. That's great. Um, 
So the first thing that comes to mind when I saw that you were running, I immediately reached out to you and said, um, what can I do to help you? What do you need? So I asked that question again into all of the viewers and the residents of DC. What can we do to help you? What do you need mm -hmm. from us? Yes. So, uh, so I would say two ma major things. One, I want if you know anybody in my single member district, that's 8D06. Um, we are the most southwestern area of DC, right before you get to Eastover. Uh, if you know anybody that lives in that area, please encourage them to check me out so that I can earn their vote. Um, you can check out my website at elise4dc.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram at elise for dc so check out my Instagram and Facebook pages. Um, secondly, I, I need volunteers, okay? So mm -hmm. knock it on doors. My Sign goal is to touch every single resident. Um, I want them to know my platform. I want Absolutely. them to know, um, I want to hear about what they care about most in the community um, so that I can help them and I can be their advocate. And, uh, and yeah, I knock on doors every Saturday. Um, I just did a neighborhood cleanup last week, I last Saturday. That. I saw that. That's, I had that's 14, the most humbling thing. Too. Uh, it's very humbling. Yeah, yeah. we uh, collected 10 bags of trash, and uh, that's not just something that I want to do during the election. That's something that's needed once a quarter. Right. Um, right. And so you know, we have to keep our, our streets clean, and I'm, I'm committed to do that. I agree. You definitely have to keep them clean, and you have mm -hmm. to keep them where people want to come and stay. Exactly. New people and the existing people. You have Correct. to make people want to, you know, say this is where they live. Um, before I lose my thought, piggybacking on something that you said, for the viewers who may not know exactly what your district is and what that entails, like can you give us like a range, like mm -hmm. the streets, like the areas for those of us who aren't really familiar with the, the Ward 8? Yeah. So within Ward 8, um, I'm specifically in 8D06. So that is, um, so if you are on South Capitol, mm -hmm. um, it's South Capitol and Martin Luther King. So my area is from Forrester Street. So you have Forrester, oh, Elmira, okay. Darrington, Danbury, and Chesapeake, um, as well as the ends of, or the sides of those streets of MLK and South Capitol. And Halley Terrace is also included. Okay, that's good to know. Perfect. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any more questions for you, but thank you so much for coming. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. sure. So we'll take a quick break, you guys. Stay tuned. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Talk, fashion, walk in, mall, super no. Anything less is unacceptable. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Ball talk, fashion, walk in, mall, super no. Anything less is unacceptable. Shelly Roy Show. 
You're now tuned to the Shuddy Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk, and mall super no. Anything less is unacceptable. So, our next guest is well known in the DMV and the surrounding area. He's a comedian, he's an actor, a radio show host. You guys help me welcome my guest, Mr. Joe Cleasy. Now, you, yeah. now, first of all, you know you're too old to be calling me so Cleasy. You know I my. Was we are way too old. I am Joe Clear. Okay. I I, the the children Clay. call me Clear. What with the Joe Cleasy? So, so no, thank no you. the children say that. We are grown. We are extra grown. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> anyway, how's everything? It's Thanks great. for having me on your premiere. Thank you. Uh, the so first much. one. I'm thank sure this so is going to go far, far, far. This Everybody out there, make lot. sure y'all continue to support. Yes. Thank you so much. It means a lot to have no you problem. here. No problem. No problem. I'm premiere. happy to be here. Definitely. Definitely. I appreciate your time. And oh, you're everything. welcome. You're welcome. Everything. You're Definitely. super welcome. Thank you so, so much. <laughs> and to piggyback, I am also very excited. I was online doing some research on you. Okay. I see all the things that you're doing, the uh, philanthropy and all that, the real estate and all that good stuff. So yeah. I've done my research. But for the people who don't know Joe Cleasy, a Joe player, He's trying to be why modest. don't you tell us where you're from and... Uh, where you grew up. Tell us a little something cool. about yourself. So I am straight out of Seat Pleasant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then uh, when it, that was where we, uh, my my father and my mother, our first, they moved to to D.C. from Florida and Kansas, oh. and so we were raised here, and we started over on Jasper Place. Y'all know Jasper Place? Yes, yeah, South Beach. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. You know what I'm talking about? I wasn't sure. I yeah, just y'all know what? Then Penn Southern. <laughs> Y'all know Penn Southern? <laughs> Who don't know Penn Southern in here? Y'all done bought some weed at Penn Southern. Stop playing. <laughs> and then we moved uh, out to Sea Pleasant. So I grew up in Sea Pleasant, Capitol Heights. And then uh, when I was about 15, 16, my mother started, you know, some of my friends started getting in trouble. She was like, we're going to move you away from that, that element. And we moved to Bright Seat Road. <laughs> Okay. For those of you who are like from here, 
who wondering why I'm looking at the camera I'm like, like what's this. wrong with Bright T. You know what's wrong. Don't be acting. Chef, don't get on here act new. You know what's going on with Bright T. Bro in the 80s. You already know. <laughs> so we <laughs> so I, I Bright Seat Road, I, I graduated from Largo High School. And um, Largo, guys. Yes, indeed. And went on to the, the, the great uh, Morgan State University. No disrespect to Howard, mm-hmm. but you Morgan. know, I went on to Morgan State University. Uh, I don't know many people from DC who actually go to Howard. Right. We get the hell out of here. <laughs> I had never seen that. Okay. I was like, oh, you she went to, but you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I left and I went to, back. I went to a good old Morgan State University, uh, and that was in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> and y'all know what was up at Morgan State. So you done came to a party or two, <laughs> Ella. I, I don't think so, but I, don't be this, don't front for these people on Facebook. I don't, okay, don't make you did your research. I did mine too. <laughs> don't don't make me tell people about. No, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just making that up. I've never seen. Her I got nervous though. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, hold up. What she thought I, I went to Coffin a couple of times. No, nah. no. So I went to Morgan State, and uh, you know, I got a degree in psychology, and uh, but. At Morgan, I, I really just was, uh, that's why I turned to media. I had no, I went away to school to be an artist. I paint and draw and all that kind of stuff. So that's what got me out of the house. But once I got to, to Morgan State, it was, it, was made to, it was made clear to me by a great professor that uh, I had a, I needed to be yeah. in, yeah. I needed to be performing. Yeah. She made me get in a play. I actually had to be like in a serious play. I played King Aegis. In the in the uh, in the old Greek uh, Medea, and um, and that was my beginning. And then after that, it was just like, well, let's see what let's see where this takes me. And you know, as an art major, there wasn't a lot of money right. on the right. other side of that right. degree. <laughs> so, and you know, we from DC, we like nice things. Yeah. I needed, I needed my new Tim's every. I need new Tim's <laughs> every uh, spring and fall. I need, I need, I, I need gear. I need yeah. a car. I need so. Um, what ended up happening was, you know, I was a senior in college and got paid for my first comedy show. I was like, they paid people for this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was psyched. <laughs> and so that's how, that's how the whole thing kicked off. Um, and I just, I just kept, 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 kept going. I had a I briefly, excuse me, I'm sorry, Shelly. Briefly, when, uh, when I got out of Morgan, I started working as a social worker. I started working in social work because I ended up getting a degree in psychology and uh, started with it as a social worker. And that's where the philanthropic work comes from. I continue to do that to this day. Um, it's like that's using your platform. Yeah. I can reach more people. Yeah. Um, and I and the thing about, you know, shout out to the people who do social work, because yeah. that is stressful and and, and, and emotional. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's heavy. Yep. It's heavy, heavy, heavy. And I had a concentration on young black men right. and young black women. Right. Let me show them what my parents showed me to get them onto the... And that thing is it's something else. I still work with the Covenant right. House. I'll say that. Mm-hmm. It's still a need for that. Yeah. yeah. And so I work, for the, work with the Covenant House and for the Covenant House, um, you know, doing anything that I can to, you know, to, to, to give up... Look, we, we always talk about the conditions that we are under. Mm-hmm. So my job was like, well, let me see what I can do. My parents blessed me. I was right. blessed to go to college, have this gift of being able to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, so right. the, on, the, on the flip, why don't you do something with that? Right. Let's see who you Especially can help. since you have the platform. Yeah, and then I, then I start gaining platform after platform after platform after, after platform. After. Yeah. I keep me a platform. I've been doing that since the 90s. <laughs> I'm keeping it 100. You look, at my, look at my Instagram today. <laughs> now, nah, for real, today, I just posted today. I, I just it, Somebody sent it to me. I posted one of my first interviews. 1994 was Method Man. His, like, his, before his album, had his first album had ever came out. Okay. So that's the interview that I, it's on my Instagram right now. And so, um, from there, and that's when I was fresh out of college. So, I saw the power of trying to be a positive black man, yeah. trying to be, you know, comedy always works. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are reaching out to people and you keep that, uh, you know, you keep the spirit of service right. like Absolutely. you have, yeah. you keep that spirit of service with you all the time. You know, God just be laying the yeah. stuff out for you. I, I and, and I've had platform after platform after <laughs> platform. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. I'm looking right. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, God, I know right. what you're doing in my life. Yes, yes. I don't know what everybody else is doing, but me. Right. Thank you, God. Right. <laughs> I, I thank him every it. time I get a chance. And you should. Yeah. You should. That's a I absolutely yeah. love it. The heart of a servant. Yes. And that's the thing I think that our community needs a whole lot, mm-hmm. Ella, is, the, and, and is to foster the idea of service. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, you got you got to think about it. We grew up in the in the in the late seventies, eighties, nineties when me 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 culture came into play in America. We watched Wall Street run away. Remember the Reagan years when they was all it was all about me 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 me. Yeah. And the the ramifications of that is here we are forty fifty years later. And everybody only really thinks of themselves. And when you see somebody who says, oh, I'm here to be a service, we look at them with a side eye. Skeptical. Like, what you, yeah. what you, what you, yeah, what right. you trying to get out of my pocket, Pat? Exactly. It's true. You know what I'm saying? We don't, we don't, so so exactly. it's, it's, a, it's a thing that I like to push when I do work with young people who are coming from dire situations. I mm-hmm. still push service for them because it, it has that, you know, it, it has that thing where it reciprocates it and, and, then, and then doubles and triples Absolutely. and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And so, and it makes your dark times better, and, and all of that. So, it does. that's what I walk in. That's what I. Man, you about to get me getting touched, man. Hold on, no, hold on, no, hold on. No, oh, that's good. That. We did, and it's so we positive did. to hear that mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. from you. Like well, it, it really is. Like we need more of your kind of people in the community. We do. We, we do. really do. And it's yeah. you're so humble. You're funny. Thank you. You have so Thank many you. amazing accolades, but just sitting here with you, <laughs> just the humility, like you're so humble, and I, I love it. Uh, well, like, here's that, the thing. What is it? I got to go back around <laughs> seat plus. <laughs> I got to go see my people. And you know, you can't be showing off. That's true. <laughs> off of Central Avenue. So they're reminded. They are like y'all. <laughs> they that you have. It. Central Gods is still Central Gods. That's they true. They're not playing. So <laughs> so you keep a, um, and I kept that with me from yeah. the beginning. C- cute story. Uh, I had just gotten my job, my first job with BT, and I was and I was traveling, doing comedy, and I'm, and I'm killing them. So it's Thanksgiving, and I came home. Listen, y'all, listen, everybody. I had it. Listen, everybody. I went, look, listen, everybody. I went down to Up Against the Wall. I remember that. <laughs> on Georgia Avenue. And I caught the, the greatest Carl Knoss oh. <laughs> <laughs> outfit they had. It was, a, it, was a, it was this little sweatshirt with the, remember he had the little brass thing right here on the, on the, on the chest. And I had some cream, it was some cream you jeans. I had the little hat and everything. <laughs> And I was killing it, was right? Killing I looked like I was fresh out of a video. <laughs> Man, I came home for Thanksgiving. My sister said, where you going, where you going with that on? I said, well, I'm coming to, to Thanksgiving. She said, this ain't TV. <laughs> this is not TV. This you need to, TV. uh-uh, you still just, and, and that was the last time that I was right. full of myself. Yeah. That was the last day, and that happened to be 90. 394 sometimes. Right. You know, once your sister say it, you're like, oh, I guess it's, I yeah. guess it's real. Right, right. Bring it back down. Yeah, bring it down. Bring it back uh-huh. down before you get curried yeah. <laughs> on Thanksgiving. You don't want to get curried on Thanksgiving. No. Got to sit at the kids' Definitely table not. in your car oh. not outfit <laughs> looking crazy. To- <laughs> with your cream hat. Uh, with your cream hat on the side looking crazy. So that's the uh, that's one that's one thing that I always keep in the back of my mind as I go out and I travel. Sure. Humility yeah. will get you a million more places than mm-hmm. um, you know than than not. I received that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, and, it, and just to interrupt that. you for a second, because mm-hmm. um, I saw something on your on your I don't know, Instagram or Facebook. Um, you had said something on your show one day, and somebody called you out on it. Oh yeah. And um, I thought your response was amazing because. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. But. That level of humility, we don't see that. Mm-hmm, and exactly. so, a person with with your platform and a, of your caliber, like I was really humbled by it. it blessed me. So I thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. You know, and being a uh, comedian, you know, sometimes people think we're just about jokey. J. It's not. You know, uh-huh. you have a heart, and I just appreciate yeah, I what that. I saw. And I was like, okay, he's all right with me. So thank well, you for that. Thank you, thank you, Ali. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's um. You know, I do a I do something called a moment of clarity mm-hmm. every morning on my show, and and I did this moment of clarity, and a brother called me out on something I had done months ago. Wow. He was like, "Well, you that's not the same. You know how people like, nah, this ain't the same energy you had. You know, they be in the comments. He left all kinds of emojis and stuff. Curry, 
<laughs> right? But when I went back and looked, I was like, you know what? This this man is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And to your point, I had I don't see people who who really genuinely mm -hmm. go back mm -hmm. and do what you're supposed to mm -hmm. do. So, you know, I I did what I what I thought my my God would ask absolutely. me to do. You know, I know it sounds cliche and kind of corny, but nope. no. that's what I that's what I kind of walk in mm -hmm. day to day, minute Absolutely. by minute, moment I'm by loving. moment. Because so, people yeah. are watching you, Absolutely. you know. But people even if they you. was, I'm still, you know, I know where my blessings right. come and from. That's what matters. I mean, what you do no and how food. you respond when people not I've been with no food, and then the food came. Mm -hmm. I know it. Come on now. Yeah. My mother was. I don't. I don't know how we going. And next thing you know, there it goes. So Amen. you know where it come from. Mm -hmm. And so if you keep that with you. Um, you, I, I thought that was the right thing to do, and I did. Now, side note, he's still popping up on my Instagram, calling me all kinds he's of suckers, and, you. and he, yeah, he's heckling me and everything. But he's a good dude, and I started following him, and he's doing some good work as well. Uh, shout out to My Block TV. I'm gonna shout him out on here. Shout out to My Block TV. Make sure y'all go uh, follow him and salute that brother. He's in Africa, actually. Just shot something in Africa, so mm. shout out to My Block TV. Absolutely. Anyway. Shout out yeah, 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 listen. The making of a boss. Guy. Listen, the making of a B-O-S-S. B-O-S-S boss. Spell it for him, Joe. Spell it. Uh -huh. boss. That's right. I did your Shout job. That out. Shout that out. Shout that out. One more time. Shout that out for me. The B-O-S-S -S boss. That's uh -huh. right. Built on survival skills, guys. Word up. Look at the woman. Practice. <laughs> Give me face. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no, I love it. Definitely. Um... So, man, man, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm speechless. But um, like I said, you I made her speeches on her premiere of her show. Cut it out, Joe Cleasy. You, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Cleasy. No, but seriously, you've done so many amazing things. So for me, and I'm sure for some of the other listeners, um, when did you really consider yourself to be successful? People ask me this all the time, and they, they look at me funny when I say it. I considered myself successful the day Morgan State University accepted me into Ooh. that school. That's it. And uh, then after that, you know, I got scholarships and stuff. But what it was is at that time, you know, I was a young man. I was, um, I had run into some, a little bit of trouble. I never got in a lot of trouble. That was an, a little bit was enough for me. Mm. I didn't. I didn't need no whole bunch of back and forth with the police and the lawyers and the judges and the, the court appointed this and nah nah nah. I sold drugs for ten minutes. Hello. <laughs> you hear me? Y'all laughed because y'all was carrying through the eighties. Y'all you know, had a boyfriend who was who was drugs, successful. You sure wasn't soaked. I sold. I, listen, I got. Sure wasn't soaked. Let me let me let me keep it a hundred with you. I got the boat in my hand at eight. 50 by 905. <laughs> I was in the security guard's office at the school oh at Largo High School getting cussed out. Wow. For having look, and that was that was, that was I crazy. ain't need no more after that because he cussed me out. And I had never had no grown person cuss. I'm a good kid. Exactly. But this grown man was calling me, call you. Look, you punk. Bring that <laughs> in my school again. I was like, can they talk? To people like, is that Kansas? Are they supposed to talk to the right. children like that? Exactly. And this is before you can complain. That's and so, right. so he cut me out and all this other stuff. And, and he left me in the office and it was two, two straight up goons, straight up thugs sitting in there with me. And so he left out <laughs> and one of the dudes said, uh, you Joe, right? I said, yeah. He said, uh, what you doing in here again? I said, well, you know, I, I had a little, I'm trying to sell a little boat, man. Both of them bust out laughing in my face. Mm -hmm. wow. Like, for real, slip. Right, exactly. ah, you know, they hit that jump. Ah. I was like, you know what? Um, that's a sign from the Lord telling me that I don't, need, I don't need to touch no more boat. Next boat you. I touch, I'm going to be sailing on. Absolutely. That's going to be the end of that. And so, so at that point, I made, up my, I, I made up my mind to never do that again and figure out what it was that was going to be my thing. And the only thing that turned me on at that point was art. Right. I, by, so by the time I got into my senior year, I think I had three art classes my senior year of high school. I just right. stayed in the art room and, and that took me on to you know, the, to, to the rest. And then when, you know, I applied to a bunch of schools and my brother was at Morgan State at the mm -hmm. time and I had been visiting the school a lot. And I got this acceptance letter and you know, they said, we are pleased to inform you. And this was the first time I had ever gotten 
a please to inform you mm -hmm. from from someone who didn't know me and it was right. just it was like a real confirmation mm -hmm. and it was a it was a for me it was a, a confirmation that I can go and grow and be and do anything I want to with my life here they were accepting me as an art major of all, I didn't know no art majors. Do you right. know any art majors? Mm -hmm. I didn't know, you know, everybody I knew was going into engineering or business. So I'm pre-med, you know, all the stuff that your parents tell you to do. And I was going on an art and then they started giving me scholarship money. I was like, you know what? I'm a beast. Yep. Now, at that point, I was like, I'm a beast. Yeah. I'm him. Mm -hmm. I'm Joe Clay. So, so the Joe Clay y'all see on the radio, I, was, I had been him for a long time. Wow. Oh, yeah, I was already here. You can go ask my classmates. They'll tell you, nah, he been like this. Mm -hmm. I always, man, please. No, Look at me. Good. And I'm, I'm glad that you said that um, <laughs> because when you think about that question, most people feel like success is when you become a public figure, when you, yeah. quote, unquote, make it yeah. status mm -hmm. monetary-wise. And, Ella, yeah. you and I were talking about that. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting what your answer was because I, too, feel the same way. Um, I consider I considered myself to be successful when I made it on the other side alive. Mm -hmm. So that's a different perspective. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'm, it's interesting that you said that. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. For I, that. I got raised by some. My, my parents were different, and yeah. one of the things that they instilled in me was when you see everybody doing something, mm -hmm. make sure you go do something else. That's mm -hmm. right. When everybody is doing one thing, something. You mean everybody right? You mean everybody right? Ain't none of them wrong. Exactly. Like the. Like our current political situation. Okay. You mean to tell me, nah, man, uh, I ain't listening. To, I don't listen to neither one of them, neither side. <laughs> to, to be quite honest, you mean to, everybody picks. Right. So for me, the whole up, I'm not picking. Right. My thing was, why am I, why am I picking? Mm -hmm. If everybody picks, something got to be wrong with this whole system. Mm -hmm. If everybody picks and just sticks with one side, what if they wrong today? What if they wrong today? You just standing on just because I'm waving the same flag they waving up. Nah, he might be wrong as could be, mm -hmm. and you gonna go down with the burning plane. So, I'm I'm of the mind that you know you you make up your mind. And for me, it was when them people said you can come to this school, that was it. Absolutely. And I loved my great Morgan State University so much that I stayed for six years. And, <laughs> Just a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> Including summer school. That's all right. <laughs> but but I, got degree, I got my degree. I got my degree. I got my degree. I got my degree and then went on to, you know, have this life that I have now. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's a beautiful thing. That was the end goal. America sure. got a problem. But yeah. back to your point, America, I think America has a real problem with status. Yeah. yeah. I think America has sure. a, a very real problem with status. Um and it will catch you up. Mm -hmm. It will. I, um, if I could, a Not quick you know story. Who you are, but yeah, sure. Quick story. I had a, uh, when I came back to DC, I took the morning radio job, right? So now I got the morning radio show job, and I better do with the morning radio show. I better do with Donald yeah. Simpson and Russ Parner. I'm moving to Montgomery County, <laughs> and I'm going to go uh, <laughs> Potomac adjacent. Yeah. And, oh and, and, and all of that. <laughs> And I, I went to the dealership and went and got me a brand new 2017, uh, a 2015 uh, uh, Range Rover, black on black on black on black. <laughs> that thing was sweet. You hear me? I put everything in it. I'm at the dealership. Give me everything that come with the joint. Well, uh, I got through working with the radio. I got an endorsement deal, right? Mm. And I get an endorsement deal for Honda. Right. So what that means is I, you hear me on the, on the radio mm -hmm. reading the spots and they pay me for that. Right. Another way they could pay you is why don't you drive our car mm -hmm. in lieu of giving you the actual cash? Why don't you drive our car? Yeah. So I didn't take that car. You didn't want to get that black on black. Well, on here's black the back. thing. I was <laughs> sitting there saying, why would, what, how would, how would Joe Clay look driving a Honda? Right. That's not, no, we're not doing that. Yeah. We're not driving no Honda. <laughs> wow. So one day, uh, <laughs> I'm at the light, and I can see myself in the car next to me, <laughs> and I was like, I look real stupid in this car. <laughs> I look real dumb in this Range Rover when a man gonna give me a free 
Yes, for real. New <laughs> <Yes. laughs> But I was still, I still had that status symbol mind a little yeah. bit, and I was struggling mm. with it. And I was talking to my wife, should I give up the Connor and things? Blah 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 blah. The engine like kept coming on on that jump. <laughs> you know, anybody who knows a rainbow, the engine like yeah. stay on on that jump. But yeah. I was like, no problem. Here's your seventeen hundred dollars. Range Rover of Annapolis. I got your little funky money, right? Just, just dumb. So my barber is right down the street from me on Branch Avenue. I still get my hair cut at Expert Two Bob Shop. Shout out to Expert Two Bob Shop. <laughs> and I go in there and I'm talking to my partner Keith, my barber, and I tell him the same story. Mm. And Keith pulled the cape off me and said, "Man, get out my chair," because he's from the '80s too. Yeah. He's like, man, that's the dumbest thing I ever heard you say. Mm-hmm. Man, if you don't go get them that people hard. back that them keys to that range and go get that Honda back, dry the dry that jump to the wheels fall Absolutely. off. And they pay for the maintenance and all that too. It's outside right oh, now. Yeah. Oh yeah. The jump like this out there right now. Y'all know that's who right. Up? <laughs> hey, shout out to Sport Honda, Silver Sport. <laughs> You could be a sport fan too, <laughs> just like me. A sport hard. I know that's right. <laughs> that's real talk. That's no, real that talk. No, that is real talk. One of the best decisions I ever made Absolutely. in my entire. Because you saved it. You put that money back into your family. It family. wasn't even about the, that. Was one thing, but yeah. the peace of mind that came along Absolutely. with this very dependable. Mm-hmm. It was a twenty. They gave me a twenty eighteen Honda Accord. That jump vicious. Oh yeah. It's quick. It's no, fast. That jump. Licking, anybody in the room looking for a car? Let me holler at your boy. I, I sell cars too. <laughs> COVID got me selling cars. Listen here. I can get you out of quarantine for zero percent APR. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> no, but that's true. Honda is one of the most reliable cars. That and Toyota. So I drive that joint, and you know, the next time I saw myself in the reflection, I was real proud. I'm proud. Of of course. There you go. Amen. So you, made, you made a great decision. Yeah. Following that, I made a great decision. I did not. I moved from Potomac, from Montgomery County back to Prince George's County right. to Bowie, which right. is a nice in between between Sheep Pleasure mm-hmm. and Potomac. Yeah. <laughs> Between Sheep Pleasure and Potomac, where could you uh, boo me? <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do booey. So I'm right down the street from where I grew up. Uh, I, re- I renovated a home. Since I became a realtor, I started to understand how home renovations and all that stuff mm-hmm. work. So I renovated a home, saved myself about a little more than a, a half a million dollars on a home. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. You know, over the life. Of, I say it was just... Thinking yeah, differently. You get that mindset, you definitely can and create then, wealth through home. Mm-hmm. And so God just keep laying stuff out for me to go That's and awesome. have opportunity after opportunity after opportunity once I follow, you know. Absolutely. I, and, and I'll be quite honest, I loosely <laughs> follow. <laughs> I, I'm keeping it honest because people are like, well, what's your, your, your church home? Don't worry about my church home. That's between me and where I be at on Sunday morning <laughs> with my wife and children. We be in the house. <laughs> well, no, I, I thank you so, so much. Oh, you're us. welcome. You have definitely blessed oh, you Ella super, and myself. Super welcome. And I definitely would love to have you come back again. Whenever, whenever. Sure. Make it before you blow up, though. <laughs> Don't get blown up like uh, Joe Clay said he want to do the show. It. Joe Clay want to do the show. Who? <laughs> Please, man, tell him he could do a little pre show or something. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> but but anytime you, so you call me, I will happily come back. Thank you. No problem. And thank you guys for tuning in to the mm-hmm. Shelly Roy Show. I am your host, Shelly Roy, and my co-host, Ella Vespella. Yes, indeed. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Boom. Thank you. The Shelly Roy Show. To the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Boss talk, fashion walk in, mall super new. Anything less is unacceptable. The Shelly Roy Show. Welcome to the Shelly Roy Show. You're now tuned to the Shelly Roy Show. Balls talk, fashion walk, and mall super new. Anything less is unacceptable.
Charlie Roy Show. You're now so 